Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a professional, senior corporate professional turned coach, Ave Petrie from Estonia. Ave, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Ave is, the, is an executive and systemic team coach. She's earlier spent time with Coca-Cola and she's founded an e-commerce startup. And today we're going to talk about coaching and Ave's e-commerce startup. I hope that I have the pronunciation of your name correct. Um, actually, like Ave. <laughs> Ave. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. So Ave, yeah. let's talk uh, coaching. Uh, yeah. Let me start by asking you, what is a systemic team coach? Excellent question. Um, you know, there are team coaches and there are systemic team coaches and there are millions of other types of coaches. So uh, we are all focusing in helping the team work together better because mm-hmm. um, it's not just about the achieving the goals. It's how you achieve the goals and in the how in terms of how people work together. Mm-hmm. That's where the teams normally break down yeah. or the connections don't work. Mm-hmm. And what the systemic part adds um, on top of the working with the team Mm -hmm. is also helping the team see that it's not an island, but it is part of bigger systems and different systems. Mm -hmm. For example, every team member is also a member of the family system. Mm -hmm. And every team is part of an organization. An organization is part of the country, larger world all these different institutions so systemic team coaching takes all of that into account when we are working with a team Mm. very interesting so for uh, for our viewers and listeners Ave could you give me an example of the work you've done without giving any names of course okay Um, I um, I actually have received um, ICF Middle East Prism Award mm-hmm. uh, for the work I have um, I have done um, with um, with a team. Uh, I like I can name them because they have given the permission. Okay. Uh, team Omifko in mm-hmm. Oman, yeah. and uh, there we worked. Um, it wasn't just team coaching; it was also work done with um, with the individuals. So there was mm-hmm. executive coaching and also there was training uh, that they received. So it was a larger program. Mm-hmm. Um, but we really worked on um, the aim of the project was mm-hmm. to help um, the managers, senior managers and middle mm-hmm. level managers take more responsibility mm-hmm. um, because typically, you know, the responsibility mm-hmm. was passed up. <laughs> as you might be familiar. Yeah. Um, so it was really empowering um, their management level to, t- to make decisions and lead their teams. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. So uh, let me ask you a few basic questions about coaching. You mm-hmm. know, uh, three, four, five decades ago, coaching was really done either by a family elder or by someone senior in the corporate ladder who took a liking for a young person. Yeah. Today, it's become a, a well-accepted profession. Mm-hmm. My question to you, Ave, is what has changed that people are now willing to pay for advice? Mm. You know, the type of coaching you're talking about still continues. Mm-hmm. And it's really good that it does. Um, the, the difference that a person you don't know Mm -hmm. or uh, who is a professional can offer in addition to a family or Mm -hmm. or a corporate coaching is that we tend to be more objective Mm -hmm. and this is something by ICF we we have to be it's one of our ethical standards Mm -hmm. um, to stay objective Um, so the difference really is like if your father was coaching you for example Mm -hmm. he might want something that he believes is right for you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Whereas when I am coaching you, I don't have preconceptions about you. So mm. I'm not pushing you in a certain direction. Okay. And in, it's not saying that, you know, family members do that um, deliberately. Right. They might do, mm-hmm. but it's just like our underlying biases. Mm. 
Whereas professional coaches, we actually work with our biases to stay mm-hmm. objectives. Mm-hmm. So you're more likely to get a very objective coach mm-hmm. who is really helping you figure out what you need mm-hmm. rather than trying to tell you what they think you need. <laughs> mm-hmm. Interesting. And another question that is often asked from me is that how does a coachee evaluate whether uh, he or she has got a good coach? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are different ways of evaluating. Um, uh, Like one, the the really typical one is Mm -hmm. like, okay, I signed up with a coach Mm -hmm. and um, am I moving towards the goals that I've set myself? Mm -hmm. And there are other ways of evaluating a coach Mm -hmm. is like, is my coach really listening to me? Mm -hmm. Um, Do I feel heard? Do I really feel like my coach is objective? Mm. Or are they trying to steer me in a certain direction? Mm. Mm. And and also is is like, are we able to have frank conversations? Mm -hmm. Do I feel like I can tell my coach what I really mean, Mm. even if it is about the coach? Mm. Or do I feel like I can't really say? That means that there is not enough safety in Mm -hmm. in this relationship. And that Mm -hmm. means that the coaching is not really doing the best work Mm -hmm. that can be done. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the additional ones in addition to to like the typical, am I achieving my goals? Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Uh, My next question, Joe, is... uh, you know, different countries, and you have worked in the Middle East, uh, you're in, in Europe. How does culture impact coaching? Culture is a very important part mm-hmm. uh, of coaching. Mm. And, um, and as coaches, and, you know, I have not only worked in Europe and Middle East, I've also worked in North America well, yeah. quite extensively. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, the culture impacts how the people are seeing the world Mm -hmm. very much Mm -hmm. and what is okay and what is not okay in that culture. Mm. So the coach's responsibility is to be aware of the culture that they are uh, coaching in, Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to really be of support Mm. to the person Mm. um, that they are coaching. Okay. Um, And, uh, you know, Different coaches have their own styles that they bring to a, uh, to a coaching relationship. What would you say is your unique uh, style and your value add that you bring into a coaching relationship? Yes. Um, my, my style is, I, I would say that I am very supportive. Mm-hmm. And I also, in this safe environment, I do challenge my clients. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do challenge them to reach for what they might not think they are possible. Mm-hmm. It is possible for them. Um, but I'm just asking them to, you know, reach a little bit higher mm-hmm. and see what uh, what they might not think is possible, but it could be. Mm-hmm. And another part of my style is that... Um, I'm not just working with the head, mm-hmm. but I'm also working uh, with people's feelings. Mm-hmm. Because very often um, in the in the coaching uh, relationship, the coachee has decided I'm going to do this and this is the best course of action and I'm going to get it done. And then I'm going to ask, um, so how do you feel about mm-hmm. actually starting this? Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh. It's so hard. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. it's easy to override your mm, feelings. Mm. But then obviously what happens if you go ahead and override your feelings, mm. you won't make that much progress because it's always a struggle. And um, it's better to recognize that right there and then that maybe that's not the right action for me. Mm. Maybe I need to work a little bit, find out what's preventing me from Mm. actually feeling good about starting on that. Correct. Correct. Well said. So uh, let me move uh, our conversation to uh, the younger generation leaders who are now in uh, leadership roles. You know, these Mm -hmm. are the millennials and the Gen Zs. uh, And, Mm -hmm. you know, they've been in organizations for a while and now they're getting into leadership roles. Uh, what are some of the areas 
that you think uh, millennials and Gen Zs need to be coached in? Mm. Yeah, it's 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 different to coach um, millennials and Gen Z, um, especially what I really love about them that mm-hmm. they don't really think that um, you know. Uh, for better way of saying, I have to do it for the golden country. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> they really want to do it for themselves, and they have the the courage to say that. No, I don't Correct. like it. Mm-hmm. I, it's not for me. Mm-hmm. I need to find something else. They mm-hmm. have that courage that older generations uh, very often they, has been trained out of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, what I find really working. Um, a lot uh, with uh, with the Gen Z and and millennials is is they really they um, what should I say sort of like crush against mm-hmm. the um, older structures that are mm-hmm. within the organization. Mm-hmm. Um, you know they want to collaborate with everyone and they want to move ahead with their enthusiasm. And then there might be um, some leaders there who want to be consulted. Mm -hmm. on everything and um and they find such a big discrepancy is like why do i have to go and ask every time when they've told me that i can do it that it's my responsibility and then when i don't ask i get in trouble Mm -hmm. so so what i find myself working a lot with is how to manage up Mm -hmm. and um and you know you make this um this uh, boss of yours or the manager or many managers, mm-hmm. um, your ally rather than your enemy that you have to uh, crush against. Mm. And yet, uh, you know, speak, uh, speaking to so many people in organizations, I find that there is a little bit of a divide that exists in perceptions of the younger millennials and Gen Zs and the senior leaders. My question to you is how can workplaces get ready to be able to, for senior leaders to start handing over their more powerful roles to the younger managers who are now in positions of authority. Yeah, it's um, it's it's really. I mean, I don't have one single answer to that. No, absolutely. It's, it's 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 something that we actually work a lot with teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, because within teams you find very often different generation representatives. Correct. And <clears throat> I am, you know, making. Um, making an example, which is not doesn't mean that everyone is like that, but Absolutely. very often, uh, very often the older people are, you know, conservative and sticking to this is the way it's always done. And younger mm. people is like, oh, well, let's do something differently. Um, and it's it's really finding what is the common ground, where can they agree on? Yeah. Because being conservative is not bad, mm-hmm. and wanting new things is not bad either. They're both useful. Um, so let's find what is what is the way we can respect our values mm. and respect our culture mm-hmm. and also move ahead and not mm. stay where we've always been. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Well said. Well said. So now let me move to uh, the next part of our conversation, which is your e-commerce startup. Mm. Um, tell me a little bit about this and what was your motivation to start an e-commerce venture? Yes, I have to say that it was a long time ago <laughs> when e-commerce was up and coming. Mm-hmm. So um, it was, um, I think it was 2008. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and back then, it wasn't ve- what wasn't available was an easy solution for entrepreneurs, especially mm-hmm. solopreneurs, to start their own um, um, online store. store. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because there was a lot of work that had to go into setting that up and Mm -hmm. um, small companies didn't have the money to pay somebody. Mm -hmm. So um, we saw a niche that if we created an engine that would be easily adaptable Mm -hmm. to uh, small uh, companies, then, I mean, we would be doing something good for the the entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. and, you know, there would be something new that we could develop. So... Mm -hmm. It, it wasn't my idea. It was my business partners, uh, mm-hmm. other founders with whom we did uh, did it together. Mm-hmm. Um, I was the marketing arm and the, uh, the CEO of that of that venture. Mm-hmm. So it was more about the strategic side and how to speak to the customers mm-hmm. and how to mm-hmm. 
how to help the world see the value of the product. Yeah. Um, but it was very exciting times. I really enjoyed it. You know, mm -hmm. I've been through this startup of starting from scratch and, mm -hmm. you know, building it up and um, lots of, Lots of very long nights, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. Yeah, an entrepreneurial journey is always a challenge. Yeah. Mm. Yes, exactly. Correct. So, Ava, let's now move to the last segment of our conversation. Uh, I have a few mm -hmm. questions for you personally. Yeah. Um, you know, because my audience loves to get to know my guest a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, you spend a lot of time with Coca Cola. Um, yes. What would you say are three key milestones in your career? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, um, Coca-Cola definitely was because mm -hmm. um, I, I am very grateful for the training that I got there uh, mm -hmm. for the, you know, the professionalism and the ability to look at the strategies and the bigger picture and the global exposure, uh, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, right. So Coca-Cola was definitely a foundation of my career. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what I would say, what really changed my life uh, was when I decided to uh, study coaching. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's really amazing how it really transformed my view of life and the way I am seeing myself and mm -hmm. I'm seeing myself in the world. So number two, definitely when I started coaching. Mm -hmm. And actually number three is my venture into entrepreneurship. Okay. Because the um, e-commerce uh, mm -hmm. venture that we discussed wasn't my oh. first. Mm -hmm. um, I had my first one, which I absolutely hated. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> Um, I felt so alone. I felt like um, I don't have colleagues. Mm. Uh, I felt um, like I don't really want to go out and mm. do all of this selling that I had to do in order to get clients. So, mm -hmm. so I ditched my first uh, uh, venture and mm. went back to work in corporate. Okay. But I didn't give up. Mm. So I had the second venture and I had the third venture. Mm. And now I'm on the coaching uh, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur as a coach. Mm -hmm. And now I've been doing that since um, 2013, and I love it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really learning what you need as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And and the good news is that you have the freedom to do what you want. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, yeah, not giving up on entrepreneurship, yeah. I think, yeah. would be my number three. Fantastic. Um my next question to you, you know, in, in, a, in a career that has seen you go from a you know, top corporate professional to an entrepreneur to a coach, founded an e-commerce startup, what would you say are some of the core values you believe in? Hmm. Yeah, I think one of my core values is collaboration. Mm -hmm. It's always been something I uh, long for and that I also, I mean, team coaching is about collaboration okay. <laughs> and that I am, you know, trying to help more people to work mm. together. Mm. Um, it's, it's definitely one of my founding values. Mm. Um, the other one is, is um, sort of seeing the bigger picture mm -hmm. and not assuming um, the worst from people or mm -hmm. let me put it in a positive way assuming the best in people mm -hmm. that even if there might be a, um, something that might not sit well with me mm -hmm. I am taking the benefit of the doubt that maybe they just had a bad day or mm -hmm. maybe that is what they do in their culture is mm -hmm. nothing to do with me it's that's the usual way of you know behaving in mm -hmm. their culture mm -hmm. yeah interesting so I have time for two more questions. Yeah. My next question to you is, uh, as you look at life uh, and you've had a wonderful life, what does success mean to Ave? Mm, yeah. It has changed over the years, okay. as you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what success means to me right now is that I'm able to live where I want to mm. Um and um, that I'm able to work with people that I want to, that I'm able to choose uh, the collaboration partners that mm -hmm. I work with, and that I am also able to do something that is really meaningful to me, mm -hmm. which is um, you know, helping more people work together and transforming organizational cultures mm -hmm. to be more 
um, in line with what is needed in the world today. So that is success for me today. Wonderful. And my last question to you is who or what inspires you? Who or what? Uh, there are lots of people who inspire me. Mm-hmm. Um, there, um, there are coaches that I've worked with mm-hmm. and that are amazing and wonderful human beings mm-hmm. um, that I look up to and that I learn from. Mm-hmm. At the moment, what I, uh, who I'm really inspired by is the Ukrainian president. Um, uh, the way he stands up for his country, I'm actually getting tears in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's being such a hero Absolutely. and such, a, you know, um, uh, such an example to leadership. Okay. What leadership really is yeah. Um, yeah. in times of adversity. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. Well yeah. said. Well said, Abby. So, uh, on that note. Uh, Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for speaking to me about coaching, about your own philosophies of coaching, about your style of coaching. Thank you for talking to me about uh, your understanding of millennials and how they are integrating into uh, leadership roles in organizations around the world. And thank you for talking to me about some of your own personal uh, uh, goals, milestones, uh, and values. Thank you again, Ave, and good luck to you. Thank you very much, Ashutosh. Really lovely uh, working with you. And I love the way you are interviewing. I feel very comfortable to speak about myself. So mm-hmm. you're doing a great job. And, and, and thanks for doing that for the world. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.